All right, today I told you guys that I wasn't going to be here, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one example from each topic, and I'm going to try to give you enough information um, so that you can finish this little packet here. So all of this entire unit is on linear equations, okay? The first five questions are about slope, okay? So if you're getting slope from a graph, remember, it's the rise over the run, the vertical rise over the run. So what I do is I start with my lowest point, I want to count out how many units up until I get in line with that second point. So one, two, three, four, five, five, over one, two. Now I'm going to the left, that's negative. And that's not showing up very nicely. So five over negative two, which is really still just like negative five over two. It doesn't matter where you put the negative, in my opinion. And that doesn't reduce. You always want to make sure you reduce. Okay, um, and then for number four and five, you need the slope formula. That's where you want to take your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You want to label your ordered pairs. This is x1, y1, this is x2, y2. The little one and two just mean it's my first or my second ordered pair. All right, and two and three, it's really, I was just looking at those graphs. Um, the rise over the run doesn't really apply. This is a special line, right? It's a horizontal line. You should know the slope of that line, right? Number three is a vertical line. You should be familiar with the slope of a vertical line. All right, for topic two, we are going to write equations in slope-intercept form. Um, it says slope-intercept form versus standard form. I'm not quite sure why it says that, but I think that just means... Remember, slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Standard form, on the other hand, is the standard form ax plus by equals c. So in slope intercept form, that's typically how we write equations of lines, right? A linear equation looks like that. Um, sometimes they give us to us in standard form and we have to solve for y, okay? So um, the two things you need for slope-intercept form is, of course, the slope and the y-intercept. Okay, and once you have the slope and the y-intercept, you're good. Number six is so easy, they literally give you the information. You just need to plug those numbers into this equation here and then you're good to go. Um, identify the slope and y-intercept of the equation. Well, you should be able to do number seven, number eight, and nine. You need to convert. Both of these equations are in standard form. You need to solve for y, right? So in number eight, I'm gonna subtract two x from both sides. The biggest mistake I see here is people forget to write the x, and then they're like, oh, 20 minus two is 18. But no, 20 and 2x are not like terms. You are not subtracting. So bring down your 5y. I'm going to drop in my negative 2x, and I'm going to move this positive 20 all the way to the end. Okay? Because it's positive, I put a plus sign. If it was negative, I put a minus sign. I still need to solve for y, so I divide by 5. Everybody gets divided. So y equals negative 2 fifths x plus 4. Yay! All right, you can do that. You've got to finish it. You got it. You got it. You got it. All right, topic three, writing linear equations from a graph. What do you need? You need a slope. And you need a y-intercept. All right, you need your b and your m, okay? They're pretty easy to look at a graph and be like, oh, I know, I know what it is, okay? Here is my b. This is b. What's that value for y? One, two, three. So my b is negative 3. What's my slope? Well, I can count the y's over 1. Right? I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 over 2. Well, 7 over 2 does not reduce. Please do not put in a decimal. Okay? Once I have my m and b, I'm going to plug it into my y equals mx plus b. So y equals mx plus b. Since my b was negative, I didn't write plus and negative 3, but you can. It's not wrong. Just make sure that that 3 is negative. All right? 
So 11, 12, and 13. So the thing about 12 and 13 is all of these equations. So you can easily find the y-intercept, calculate the slope, but you can also, you're going to need to pick which equation it goes with, okay? So what I would do is I would solve all of these for y and figure out which one goes with it. You can obviously look at this graph and say, that's a negative slope, right? This is a negative slope. So once you solve each equation for y, anyone that doesn't have a negative slope, you can eliminate. It's always nice to be able to eliminate choices, especially for multiple choice um, questions. All right, so you can do 12 to 13. Don't forget about 11. All right, moving on to topic four. We are talking about x and y intercepts, okay? And x and y intercepts, what that means, no place is big enough to go. Um, an x-intercept, for the x-intercept, you make y equal to 0. For the y-intercept, you make x equal to 0. Okay? Um, and you just do it in those little, so there's only two to do, so I don't want to, so I can set up the equation here for 14, for the x-intercept. I'm going to set y equal to 0, so I have 4x minus 0 equals 4. Solve for x. Then do it again for the y-intercept. Right? The y-intercept is now 4 times 0 minus y equals 4. And you want to solve for y. You're going to do the same thing for number 15. All right, make sure you give yourself some space. And you can always, I have paper all over the room. You can, you're welcome to just grab a sheet. All right, topic five, vertical and horizontal lines. Well, they are just about as easy as it possibly gets. Let me tell you what, a Y line is horizontal. So this is horizontal. Just think about this here, Y equals negative two. It intersects the Y axis. If I was going up and down, I would not intersect this axis. So you make a point at negative 2 and draw your line straight across. X lines, on the other hand, intercept the X axis and they are vertical. And I might have spelled vertical wrong, but don't judge me. Don't judge me. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right. I'm sorry. You should be singing Christmas songs too, I literally have the word right here. I can this is a vertical line, an x line, because it intersects the x axis. So you go where x equals 5, make yourself a vertical line. Boom! Topic 6. All right, topic 6, we are given a point and a slope, or two points. You're going to write linear equations. Well, you already know the slope formula. What I'm going to give you is point slope. All right, point slope looks like this. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x. Okay? Once you, all you need to do is plug in your slope and your point and distribute and get rid of whatever's with y, and you'll have your equation. All right? I'm going to do number 20. So the problem, like, and when we wrote linear equations in geometry, I just plugged into y equals mx plus b because y equals mx plus b, because that's my preferred method, but um, I want to give you a little bit with the point slope stuff, too. All right, so I'm missing a slope. I'm going to find my slope. Negative 2 minus negative 9 becomes addition, or minus negative 3 becomes addition again. Minus the negative is addition. Negative 2 plus 9 is 7. 4 plus 3 is 7. The slope is 1. Once I have my slope, I pick a point, any point. I'm going to pick this one, okay? So y minus y1, and y1 is negative, changes to addition, equals m1 times x minus x1, and x1 is negative. So minus and negative becomes addition. Now I distribute. So y plus 9 equals 1x plus 3. Subtract 9, and y equals 1x plus Minus six. Um, remember how I said I, I've done we, we've done this before. I think it was 
I don't know what chapter it was, but we, we've definitely written linear equations. So what we can do here is the same, well, I'll use the same point. Negative 9 is my y equals 1, which is my slope, times negative 3 plus b. The only thing I don't know is b, so I'm going to solve this equation for b. So negative 9 equals negative 3 plus b plus 3 negative 6 equals b. Then you have to put it all together, right? y equals negative x minus 6. Oh, why did I say negative x? That was silly. silly. I was just kidding. One x. It's positive. So I didn't write the 1. But either way you want to go about it. Point slope is kind of like it gets you there. Once you plug it in, this ugly thing, it means an unfinished business. But you distribute, get rid of whatever was y, and boom, there you go. You're left with your equation in slope intercept form, which is exactly what we want. All right. Next topic. Topic. What just happened, y'all? What was in your... I must have it too easy. I'm sorry. Okay. Topic seven. Uh, parallel and perpendicular lines. Parallel lines. Same slope. Perpendicular lines. Reciprocal opposites. So flip it and change the sign. Flip and change sign. Okay? So I know we've done this before. You should be okay with that. Alright? In order to pull the slope out of this line, you need to solve it for y for number 24. The same thing goes for number 27. In order to find the slope, you have to have that solve for y. Then you pull out the slope and use the point. Make sure you read the question so you know you're doing it right. All right, next topic is lines of best fit. What? I was just kidding. We didn't do that. I skipped that, actually. So go ahead and skip topic eight, line of best fit, because... It's from a table. So yeah, just skip it. So skip topic eight. Moving on to topic nine, which I know you all love so very much, is word problems. All right, some of these word problems are problematic, you know? Um, I'm trying to see which one is All right, I'm going to look at 32. First off, remember what I talked about, assigning a variable. When you're looking at word problems, you're thinking about a rate, okay, because that's your slope. The rate is going to be in front of the word per or in front of the word each. Um, that is a rate. And then your starting point is your y-intercept, or, or an initial value is a y-intercept. I guess, all right, I'll do 30 first, and then I'll do 32. Well, we'll, whatever, this one's doing together, I'm doing it by myself. All right, number 30, Marianne is printing pictures for her, for her recent trip to Europe. An online print shop charges 15 cents per 4 by 6 inch print. You see this? Per? I know right away that that's my M. I'm not going to use dollar signs, right? That's how I write 15 cents. Along with a flat shipping rate of $3. This is an initial value. No matter how many prints she gets, she has to pay that $3 shipping. That is my y intercept. Boom. Look how easy that was. Now I can write my equation. y equals 0.15x plus 3. I don't need to put the point zero zero because it's different than that. Now it says if Marianne has $35 to spend, how many prints can she order? What you need to do is take that $35. Plug it in for y, solve for x. Because x represents how many prints. Um, in number 31, just to get you guys started on that, at Smith Mountain Light Boat Rentals, it costs $25 per hour. I see the word per, and I'm like, I know that's my slope. Then I keep reading, to rent a pontoon boat plus a one-time charge for cleaning. The Bangle family rented a boat from 11 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. and paid $226 for the Jones family to rent a boat. 
from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. How much would they pay? Oh, let's just stop right here. We, we forgot that last number for a second. All right, so if they rented the boat from 11 to 6, how long did they have the boat? How many hours and minutes are in between 11 a.m. and 6 p.m.? Well, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and a half. So I have a point, 6.5, comma, 226.5. All right, I now have a point and a slope. You are going to use point slope to solve for this, okay? I know... So this total B, that's usually always Y, is a total, okay? So the six and a half hours time is always X, and the total is the Y, so this is your point. And if you plug it into point slope, it's going to look like this. Y minus 226.5 equals my slope 25 times X minus 6.5. And then distribute and solve. And once you solve, I want you to then read the next sentence, or the last sentence. It says, if the Jones family rented the boat from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., how much would they pay? Remember, X represents hours, right? This is the rate per hour, so that's your X. So you want to know how many hours between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m., and then once you solve this equation, plug it in for X and find out how much it's going to cost. All right, number 32, Clint is in study hall reading The Hunger Games. After 20 minutes, he is on page 151. After 45 minutes, he's on page 181. How many pages had Clint read prior to study hall? Well, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? What we need to do is we need to find the slope, okay? There's no rate, there's no word per, right? I see 20 minutes time, which is X, and a page number, it's going to be my y. So I have an order of pairs. 20 comma 151. Then I keep going. And then I have 45 minutes. And now he's on page 181. I have two points. Find the slope. Plug it into point slope. And then make your equation. And then here it says the last question. How many pages has Clint read prior to study hall? So what you're going to do for that is you're going to make x equal to zero and you're going to find out how many pages is yes, okay you can do it i believe in you okay Third slope and then point slope and if you need point slope just go back i already went over it so you should have it all right the last word problem on here is a little bit of a bb one elena is selling wreaths and poinsettias for her course fundraiser wreaths cost 27 dollars each and poinsettias cost $20 each. If she sold 15 poinsettias and made $543, how many wreaths did she sell? Yowza! That's kind of crazy, man. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to say X is equal to wreaths. And Y is equal to poinsettias. I can make this equation in standard form, which is kind of crazy because I can do the cost. It's going to be the number in front of my variable. So 27 wreaths, right? 27 X plus 20 poinsettias, which is Y. And we're going to set that equal to $543. In order to solve the equation, we're going to need to plug in 15 for poinsettias. So plug in 15 for y and solve for x, and that will tell you how many reads you have. All right, hopefully guys do good and you don't have any questions, but if you do, you know, send me a message on Schoology. I will have my phone, and I hope you guys have an awesome day. And as long as you get this whole thing done, you will not have any homework. But if it is not done, I expect you to have it completed on Wednesday. I'll see you guys. Have a great day. Bye.